Hey everyone, it's Alyssa here from Creekside Simplicity and today I want to talk to you about reusable toilet paper. As you know, we are in some unprecedented times right now. And for some reason, toilet paper is flying off the shelves at the store. Um, it's hard to get. And as a family of five, we go through a lot of toilet paper. Now, one of the theories uh, about why toilet paper is flying off the shelves is because most people uh, spend most of their day at work and at school, when they're using toilet paper during the day, they're actually using the toilet paper from their workplace or from their school. Um, but now that they're home full time and their families are home full time, they're going through a lot more toilet paper, uh, which means that they're buying more, obviously. Now, as a homeschooling, homesteading family, we are already home full time. So uh, we're just kind of used to going through a lot of toilet paper with five of us here in the house. Now my husband works during the week, uh, but he's home on weekends. And he's also usually home in the winter time with us. So anyway, all that to say, uh, we go through a lot of toilet paper. So with all of these shortages happening, I have decided to make some of our own. Now, we are not strangers to using reusable products. Um, when my kids were babies, I cloth diapered them. I made my own cloth wipes. Um, my daughter and I use reusable menstrual products. We don't use uh, disposables. Um, we don't use paper napkins or paper towels. We've always used cloth for those things uh, for a few reasons. One, because we are, we try to be conscious of the amount of waste that our family creates. We try to live as low waste of a life as we can. Uh, the other reason is cost. So anything that you are using on a regular basis and then throwing away or flushing away you're literally throwing away money. So if you were to add up the cost of all of the things that you buy weekly or monthly, and then you throw them away or flush them down the toilet, I bet you'd actually be really surprised how much money you spend on that kind of stuff. And as a family, we try to keep our expenses as low as possible um, so that we can live on one income and so that we're just not wasting money and resources. So with all the toilet paper shortages, I thought it was a good time to go ahead and make some of these reusable wipes. Now, I'm gonna be honest, uh, without um, getting too into too much detail, uh, it's probably just gonna be my daughter and I using these um, and just for pee. Uh, initially. Now, if it got to the point where we actually couldn't get any toilet paper, then we would use it for other things. But my thought was that if we can at least reduce the amount of toilet paper we're going through right now, then that's a good thing. Uh, a, because we're trying to stay out of the stores, and B, um, there's just not a lot to be found. And I feel like all the prices of everything are going up right now also. So just the thought of spending that kind of money on something that we are going to flush away uh, just seems a little bit silly to me. We have we definitely have better ways to use our money than that. So I thought since I'm making some of these, I was going to uh, record it and show you guys how easy it is and uh, that you can do this at home very simply and it won't cost you any money. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip the camera around so I can show you what's going on behind me here and I will walk you through all of the steps 
and tell you what you're gonna need in order to do this. Okay, so I want you to think about the purpose of these and why you might just wanna consider using something you already have in the house. Um, this is obviously not something you wanna be using your best, most expensive fabric for. So I tend to hold on to things that I think might come in useful down the road. And one of those things that I've kept is uh, receiving blankets from when my kids were babies. Um, they're just cotton flannel, they're soft, they've been washed a million times, and they're just really useful to use for all kinds of things. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to make them into something else that we're gonna get some use out of. And I've already uh, cut up and used a few, as you can see, um, but I still have a few more here. And um, I think what you'll find, and what I have found with using reusable cloth products instead of paper disposable products, I think you're gonna be shocked at how much nicer it feels to use something like flannel. And when you think about it, it's actually more sanitary because how good of a job is paper doing at uh, getting you clean? Um, I think you'll find that using fabric uh, feels a lot more sanitary. And you can wet these too. You can keep like a little spray bottle um, next to your, your little basket of your wipes on the back of your toilet and you can wet them down. Um, I will go into all of those types of things later on. Uh, right now, I just wanna show you how to make these. So. I have, um, I do have some sewing tools that some of you might not have. So I have been sewing for quite a long time. So over time I have acquired some supplies, but if you don't have these supplies, all you need are a pair of scissors. I'm going to use my rotary cutter. It's just faster. It's more efficient. I can cut more layers at a time and I can make sure everything's nice and square, so that's why I'm gonna use this. But again, remember what you're using these for. You don't need fancy tools. If all you have are a pair of scissors and you don't cut perfect squares, that's totally fine. Uh, use what you have. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with the rotary cutter. Now, one of these receiving blankets, I find the best way to do this is, it's already kind of folded in half, um, if I was doing actual sewing, like something other than reusable toilet paper, I would make sure that these were ironed and nice and flat and square and all of that. But again, considering what I'm going to be doing with these, I'm not too concerned about whether it has wrinkles in it or not. Um, if they're not perfectly straight, then it's really not the end of the world. So I've got this folded in half and what I want to do is I want to kind of, you want to get it as square as you can. It's just going to make sewing it a little bit easier if it's square. Got some wrinkles in there, so I'm going to try to get those out. Kind of smooth it out with your hand. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just turn this down a little bit. Not how well you can see the lines on my cutting board. I'm gonna bring the camera in a little closer. Okay. So I'm gonna try to Line this up. Okay, so there's lines on these cutting boards. So to square it off, I'm gonna to try to line up that bottom fold with a line on my cutting board. And then I'm just gonna trim off this edge that has the hem on it because it's, it's not gonna be straight 
and I'm gonna be sewing around the edges of these so I don't want that bulky hem in the way. So I'm just gonna shift this down a little bit so I can use my ruler to make this nice and straight. And then I line up my ruler with this line on this edge. I always, uh, when I use my rotary cutter, I always have to do it standing up just so I get the right pressure. So you just put your hand really hard on the ruler and then use your rotary cutter to trim that edge. Sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through. Okay, so I have that edge removed. <clears throat> now I've been making these about eight inches square. To me, that's a, a pretty good size. So I'm just gonna count over eight squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna lay my ruler there. Again, finding the straight edge. And I'm gonna cut a strip. This is an eight inch strip. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I run out of fabric. Now, if you have old flannel sheets, um, old flannel pajamas, you want it to be cotton. You don't really want synthetic stuff for this. You want it to be absorbent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So look around your house, see what you can find. You might even have some old towels or old face cloths. Um, you can really use just about anything. Like I said, just I would just use stick to cotton. But even if you've got a stack of old washcloths, you could just use those and you wouldn't even have to sew anything. I thought about ordering some washcloths on Amazon just for this purpose. And then I realized it was kind of silly to spend money when I could just repurpose something I already had and do it for free. Okay, there's a little strip at the end here. It's not gonna be big enough, but I'm gonna just save that for something else. As you can see, I've got a little pile of strips going. Okay, so once I have these eight inch strips cut, remember they were folded in half, so now I'm gonna open them back up and I'm gonna stack them on top of each other. Again, this is a benefit of using the rotary cutter is I can stack and cut multiple layers at once, which saves me a lot of time. And I'm making a whole bunch of these, so any time savings is a good thing. When you're stacking them, you just wanna make sure that they're as even as possible. You want your edges to be lined up. Again, if this was a real sewing project, I would have this all ironed, but it's not. Speaking of which, if you have never sewn anything before, like ever, this would be a really good project to start with because if you screw it up, no one cares. Good way to practice using your sewing machine. Maybe you've got an old sewing machine kicking around and you've always wanted to dust it off and learn how to use it, but you were kind of nervous because you didn't really know how to do that. This is a good project to start with. Okay, so again, my edges, I'm just lining this up with the line on the, the board and I'm just gonna trim off this edge to make it a nice square edge. Now, if you are using scissors, you're just gonna be cutting these into squares, but I'm doing it the fast, easy way. Okay. So now again, I've got my eight inch strip this way. So now I'm just gonna be cutting it into eight inch blocks. So I'm gonna count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put my ruler here. And so now I have three eight inch squares because I stacked those together. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm just gonna keep sliding it down 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another set of blocks. Now the end of this, I don't want to waste a big chunk just because it's not exactly eight inches. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to be the last set of blocks is going to be just shy of eight inches, but that's okay. I'm going to make this one just a little bit smaller also so that uh, the last one is roughly the same size. I'm just going to trim off the very edge of this just to straighten up the edges. Okay, now we're going to head over to the sewing machine. So I'm using a machine called a serger. Looks like this. Now this is um, a machine that's the only purpose is really to finish the edges of uh, fabric. So if you don't have a serger, don't stress, I'm going to show you how to do it on a sewing machine also, a regular sewing machine. But because I do have a serger, I'm going to take advantage of that. It puts a really nice finish on the edges and it's my preferred way to finish them. Um, I'm going to show you how this works. So basically what it does is it wraps the edge of your fabric with thread so that it doesn't unravel in the wash. So that's the purpose of finishing your edges is because you don't want to throw this in the wash like this because it's going to completely unravel and you're going to have threads everywhere and they're all going to tangle together and make a big mess. So you want to finish your edges. So this machine, like I said, it actually trims and sews at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and start feeding this through. And I'm going to show you how when I get to the corners, I like to actually round the corners as I go because it just makes it easier so I don't have to stop and pivot. I just kind of keep going around. So I'm just going to turn this with my hands as it goes around the corner. the end I'm going to keep going a little bit over top of what I've already surged so that it overlaps and then I just pull it away like this and it leaves me with a chain I don't know if you can see that chain I'm just gonna trim that off and as you can see it puts a nice finished edge all the way around. Can you see that okay? Um, and then your edges won't unravel. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do it on a sewing machine using a zigzag stitch. Okay, so this is my regular sewing machine that I would use just for normal sewing. But as you can see over here, there are quite a few uh, stitch options and what I would suggest and what almost every sewing machine is going to have is a zigzag stitch. Now the zigzag is going to just crisscross back and forth over the edge of your fabric to finish it off again to keep it from unraveling. So I'm going to go ahead actually I've already set this so it's number seven on my um, thingy here. So I've gone ahead and I've changed this to number seven 
Um, you might have a machine that has dials instead of digital, but on mine it's just, uh, you just adjust it this way. You choose your stitch here, and this is your stitch width, and I'm going to put mine on the highest setting, so that's going to give me the widest zigzag um, width. And then this number here is the stitch length, so that's how long the stitch is going to be. And I'm fine with it being about a 1.5. And uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to do that. Okay, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here okay. So I'm just going to slide the fabric under the presser foot and then I'm going to go ahead and lower the presser foot down. Um, if you aren't used to using a sewing machine, I would recommend uh, finding a YouTube video for how to use a sewing machine, like learn the basics, learn how to thread your machine. Um, you know, if you have a user manual for it, that's even better because you can actually read through the instructions for your specific machine. Uh, I'm just telling you how to sew this particular project. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to use the machine because every machine is so different. Um, but you always want to make sure that your fabric is under the presser foot and then you go ahead and lower the presser foot down. And then I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch close to the edge of the fabric. So it's actually catching the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to keep going all the way to the end. When I start to get close to the end, I'm going to slow it down. Okay, and now I've got, I always stop in the needle down position because I want the fabric to stay in place when I'm turning it. So now I'm going to just pivot and I'm going to keep going. So unlike with the serger where I was able to do a rounded edge, these are just going to have square edges, which is totally fine. My fabric is bunching up a little bit there. Sometimes that happens. I'm just going to take that out because it's kind of bunching. Once it starts bunching, you don't really want to keep going. I'm going to take it out and start that side again. It's always good to do a little reverse stitch if you're starting a new uh, side. And you're just going to keep going like this all the way around all four sides. So I just want to show you the difference between serging and zigzag. Um, if you have a serger, that's preferred, but if not, uh, the zigzag st t stitch totally works. Um, so a serged edge looks like this. It kind of wraps all the way around and finishes the edge of the fabric. And a zigzag stitch is still going to finish your fabric, just not quite as neatly. So. Both will do just fine. So if all you have is a regular sewing machine, use that. Uh, don't worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of these and then I will come back and talk to you some more about um, how we're going to be using these and how to store them and wash them and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm actually in my bathroom now and I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is going to work. So out of all those receiving blankets, I ended up with approximately 60 of these uh, cloths or reusable toilet paper. And they're just um, a single layer uh, that I made out of old baby receiving blankets, flannel receiving blankets. Now what some people actually prefer to do is to double these up. So they would have taken two of these like this and then stitched them together so they were double thickness. Now I decided just to keep things simple and do them as a single layer, um, partly because it's going to make them, I think, more sanitary and easier to wash just being a single layer instead of a double layer. 
And I also made them big enough that if you wanted to, you could fold them in half when you're using them. So that makes them a little bit thicker, but then for washing purposes, they're still just a single layer. And at some point I'll probably find a little basket or something to keep these in. Uh, they're just on the back of the toilet here. As you can see, they're all different prints because I was using up the receiving blankets. Now, if your family is going to be weirded out by sharing these, you could kind of give everybody their own pattern so that everybody knows whose is whose and then they can kind of have their own, but truthfully, these are all gonna get washed together anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. So it's not really that big of a deal. However, um, we have this, one of these step-on metal uh, garbage cans, and it has a removable pail inside. So we'll just, when they're used, we'll throw them in there, and the lid will be closed, and then once we start getting low on these, I will just dump that in the washing machine and wash them. Now, if you have ever cloth diapered your children, this is no big deal to you. This is probably what you've done before already with cloth diapers. Uh, when I was cloth diapering my kids, I didn't see any point in using disposable wipes if I was using cloth diapers. So we used cloth wipes, uh, very similar to this. Um, I just would use like baby washcloths or whatever and throw them in with the cloth diapers and they would wash up beautifully and we would just keep reusing them. Um, I found with the cloth wipes, I would just uh, wet them at the sink before changing the baby. And that way they were nice and warm because I'd wet them under warm water. You can do the same with these. Um, if you wanted to, you could pre-wet these at the sink before you use one and that would be totally fine too. Um, and yeah, so that's a pretty simple uh, system. It's not too complicated. We do still have uh, plenty of toilet paper, as you can see, but this is just to help uh, reduce our usage. And it'll probably just be my daughter and I using these at first. And then if it does come to a point where um, resources are getting scarce, then I will convert the rest of the family. Um, but for now, that's how we're going to use these. And if you're not quite ready to take the step of reusable toilet paper, make them up as uh, Kleenexes or napkins or anything like that. And then if you do come into a situation where you actually can't get toilet paper, then you'll have um, something that you can use instead uh, until you're able to get some more. I know that right now with the way everything's going, I'm not counting on being able to get anything at the store. Um, I'm just going to do my very best to make things myself, grow things myself and do things for ourselves so that we are just a little bit less reliant on stores and shipments and other countries to provide things for us. Anyway, I hope that gives you one more little preparedness tool to have in your pocket. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to link up my blog post on this. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you wanna follow uh, more videos that I'm going to have coming up on being a little bit more sustainable and self-reliant in these times. Take care, bye for now.